Hey guys, today I'm doing something a little bit different. Today's postpartum yoga class will be specifically for bereaved moms whose babies can't be with them. So a few months back, my friend Karina came to me after she lost her baby Alfie, and she had been planning and hoping to get back on the mat and caring for her body um, as she'd been planning to while she was pregnant, but she found all of the postpartum videos were too triggering. So we made a plan to create a safe space for bereaved moms to be able to do yoga and fitness after pregnancy. Today's class is specifically for bereaved moms, but I'm also going to make a playlist that isn't specific for bereaved moms, but does avoid triggers so that it's a safe space that you can practice. I'm going to be honest, I don't know your pain or your loss or what you've been through, and I can't possibly um, know what that's like without experiencing it myself. But I do want you to know that my heart is with you, and I want you to know that your baby is loved and important and remembered. And so Karina is going to share a short message with you. Karina and her wife, Sam, lost, lost their baby, Alfie, on January 17th, 2019. Hi, I'm Karina. I'm Alfie's mom, and I'm so glad that Jess is doing this video for us and also putting together a wider playlist that are of videos that are suitable for us as bereaved parents. When I was pregnant with Alfie, I had a daily yoga practice. It was so important to me to be on the mat every day, to be looking after my body and nurturing my baby in that way. And I was really looking forward to postpartum yoga, Pilates, exercises. And when Alfie died during labor and I didn't get to bring him home with me, um, I was hopeful that I could still kind of put myself back together with yoga. But I found the videos that were available for postpartum, postnatal yoga just were too triggering. There were too many references that were hard for me to hear. And I, so I kind of lost my practice. I couldn't um, do a daily practice because I just didn't find the videos that would work for me. Um, so I'm so thankful that Jess is putting this together. You know, I don't know what stage of pregnancy you were at when you lost your baby. I don't know how old your baby was when they died. Um, but please know that my heart is so with you. I kind of just remember every emotion. It was last year this happened that Alfie died. And, you know, all these emotions are so fresh in my mind. The anger, the despair, the sadness, the helplessness, the guilt, um, the anger at my body, the relief also at not being uncomfortably pregnant and then the guilt at not feeling um, kind of at feeling some relief at not no longer being pregnant, just everything. I had this whole mess of emotions that I wanted to bring to the yoga mat, that I wanted to just kind of pour onto the yoga mat with. Um, and that is what I am so glad that Jess is offering. So um, yeah, wherever you are, my heart is with you. Uh, my son's name is Alfie. I would love to know your child's name and a bit about them if you want to share in the comments. Uh, and I really wish you so much ease and peace and safety on the mat today. If you named your baby and you would like to share it, I would love to hear it in the comments below. Um, and I also want to mention that if you experienced early loss or you didn't know the gender or you didn't name your baby, um, please know that this video is for you also. Of course, this class isn't just about the postures. It's really about what you and you need today. And so take what is helpful and leave the rest. If you need to take a break and rest, rest in any comfortable position. If you need to weep or cry, that's absolutely fine. Um, so just make this practice your own and whatever you need today. I know it might be difficult now, but your body does deserve love and attention and kindness, and you deserve love and attention and kindness. If you would like to dedicate your practice now to your sweet baby, you can go ahead and do that. And I'm going to dedicate this practice to baby Alfie, who is the inspiration for this practice today. So we're going to start today in child's pose. So you can find your way to the mat, spread your knees nice and wide, and let your body relax on the floor. And start to connect with your breath. Let your body feel heavy on the ground. Feel the ground supporting you.
walk your fingers out slightly and get a nice stretch. Take any movement that feels good. And when you're ready, you can lift your head and walk your hands slowly back and come to hands and knees. And we'll take a couple of gentle cat and cow stretches. Exhale, rounding out your back. And inhale, looking up. You can just move with your breath at your own pace. And the last one. Good. And we'll sit back on our knees and we can do a gentle neck stretch here. Just rolling your neck, whatever feels good. coming back to a centered position. We'll come back on all fours for thread the needle. So you can pick up one arm, thread it through your others, bring your shoulder to the ground, relax your head on the ground. And then if it feels good, you can bring that hand around your back and take a couple of breaths here. And when you're ready, bring that top hand over, place it by your face, press it back up onto all fours, and thread the needle through on the other side, relaxing your shoulder and the side of your face on the ground. And if it feels good, bringing that back hand around for a gentle twist. And unwinding that top hand, placing it by your face and pressing up onto all fours. And now we will tuck our feet and press into our first downward dog. And you can alternate lifting up your heels if that feels good, stretching out the backs of your legs, taking whatever movement feels good. Taking a couple more breaths here. And walk your feet towards your hands. And when they reach your hands, relax at the bottom and then roll up one vertebra at a time. And coming up, bringing your hands to heart center, we'll do one modified sun salutation. And inhale up, looking up at the ceiling, bringing your hands back through heart center with a length and spine, folding all the way forward, relaxing at the bottom, placing your hands on your shins and lengthening your spine, looking forward and planting your hands on the ground. Coming back to hands and knees, pressing into downward dog, and five breaths here. And 
when you're ready, walking your feet towards your hands again. And hands on your shins. Inhale, lengthen your spine. And folding forward, arms out to the side. Inhale, all the way up, looking up at the ceiling and back to Namaste. Here we're gonna take one foot and step back for warrior one. So your hips are facing towards the front and inhale up and bending your front knee and breathe. You can exhale, hands down, and we're gonna take humble warrior. So you can either clasp your hands behind your back or you can just grab your elbows and inhale, opening up the chest, look up slightly, and then exhale, folding forward. We'll let our body come down next to our front knee and you can lift your arms up and move into humble warrior and breathe. And bring your hands back in towards your body if they were up and inhale lifting your body up and we'll shift our hips to face the side of the mat and open up for warrior two soft gaze out over the middle finger spreading your toes And we'll tip back for a gentle side stretch. And coming back to warrior two, straightening your front leg, we'll move into a wide legged forward fold. Hands can be on your hips. Inhale up and exhale, fold forward. You can place your hands down on the ground and release just whatever feels good here. If it feels good, you can walk your hands over to one side and stretch towards one leg. your hands towards the other leg and stretch on the other side. And walking your hands back to center, we'll do a gentle twist open, placing your hand in front of your face and opening up to one side and exhale down and opening up to the other side and down placing your hands on your hips and using your core and coming back up and we'll twist around for warrior one on the other side so centering your hips to face the top of your mat Bending your front leg and inhale up into warrior one.
and you can bring your hands down behind you and either clasp your elbows or if it's comfortable you can clasp your hands and look up for a slight chest opener and exhale folding your body forward into humble warrior If your arms away from your body, you can bring them back in towards your body and inhale, strong legs coming up and shift your hips to the side and open up for warrior two. And tip back for a side stretch. And coming up and turn your feet out and we'll take goddess pose. Inhale your arms up and exhale. And we'll take one Kegel and we'll hold for 10 seconds here. 10, nine, Eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. Release and straighten your legs. And we'll step up towards the top of the mat and work our way back down into downward dog. Inhale up and folding all the way forward. Hands on your shins. Lengthen your spine halfway, planting your hands on the ground, stepping back to hands and knees, and tucking your toes and pressing back into downward dog. Bending your knees will come down, back into child's pose. So resting your forehead on the ground, walking your fingers forward, and we'll do some pelvic floor exercises, some kegels here. And so again, picturing a blueberry at the opening of your vagina, and we're going to pick it up and hold for five, four, three, two, one, and release. And again, kegel, five, four, three, two, one, release. And again, five, four, three, two, one, release. And two more, five, four, three, two, one, release. And last one, pick it up, squeeze. Five, four, three, two, one, and release. Great job. We can walk our hands in slightly and we'll tuck our toes pressed into downward dog. And you can lift one leg up behind you and swing it through for pigeon pose or you can do figure four stretch if pigeon pose is too deep or uncomfortable of a stretch for you walking your back leg back to find length and sitting up nice and tall and then if it feels comfortable you can fold your body down over your leg and take some deep breaths here
and when you're ready lifting your head and walking your hands back in and grounding them tucking your back foot pressing back into downward dog and lifting the other leg up letting it float up behind you and swinging it through for pigeon on the other side or moving into figure four stretch finding length in your spine and folding over your leg and breathe And gently coming out of the posture and pressing back into downward dog. And from here, we'll come back on to all fours and move into a seated position with your legs out in front of you. And we'll do a forward fold or Pachimottanasana. You can inhale our arms up. Then with a lengthened spine, fold forward, let your hands come to wherever they come on your legs. You don't have to be able to touch your toes. And fold forward, feet are flexed. Take a couple of breaths here. And on the next exhale, now we will relax forward. Let it go and just do a gentle forward fold. And when you're ready, sitting up with a lengthened spine, and then we'll take one knee in for Janu Shirshasana. Inhale up, and this time fold over one leg and breathe. And when you're ready, inhale, coming up, and we'll switch sides. Inhale up, and exhale, folding forward. Still some length in our spine, looking up at your toes. coming up and now we'll bring both feet together for Baddha Konasana or bound angle and inhale up and then exhale fold forward with a lengthened spine And coming up, and now we'll take the top of our head towards our feet and round out through our back. And take a couple of breaths here. Just relaxing.
coming up. And now we're gonna move into, back on our knees, into a modified camel position, or you can do full camel. And so we're gonna take our hands on our lower back and we can just open up. And if you're comfortable, then you can reach back for your heels and do a deeper chest opener for camel. But if you're gonna stay here, engage your stomach, protect your core, you can also stay in the modified version here. and engaging your core, coming back up. And we're gonna move into a rabbit pose here. And so we're going to tuck our chin and bring the top of our head to our ground and reach back towards our heels. And so you can tuck your chin and your head, place a little bit of weight, and then you can lift your bum up a little bit and curl your body over for a really nice spinal stretch here. Press the tops of your feet into the ground. The weight shouldn't be too much on your neck. Be gentle. And slowly coming out of the position, lowering your bum back down again. And we're gonna move down onto our mat. So carefully coming down on your side, protecting your core, and then rolling onto our back for bridge position. So bringing your heels in towards your bum and exhale, you can press into your feet into bridge. If it's comfortable, you can clasp your hands underneath you, roll your shoulders underneath, slight lift in the chin, and breathe. Your inner thighs are activated so your knees aren't splaying out. And when you're ready, you can unroll your shoulders and unclasp your hands, roll down one vertebra at a time. And bring your knees into your chest. And we'll do a gentle spinal twist here. So bringing your knees up to a 90 degree angle, letting them fall over to the side. And then you can reach out your back arm or reclining twist. And bring your legs back up to a centered position and letting them fall over to the other side and reclining twist on the other side. Next exhale, engage your core, bring your knees back up, bring your knees in, give yourself a hug. And 
and we'll extend our legs, let our toes flop out and move into Shavasana. And roll your shoulders down so your shoulder blades are flat on the ground. And we'll take a couple of deep sighs in here. Inhale in. And sigh out. <sighs> Let it all go. And one more time. Inhale in. And sigh out. <sighs> Scan your body. Relax everything from your toes your pelvic floor, your arms, your face. Let your body feel heavy on the ground. And when you're ready, wiggling your fingers and toes, stretching, and when you're ready, rolling over onto your side and coming up. Thank you so much for sharing your practice with me today. I want you to know that you are so strong. Um, I'm also going to link in the description box to the playlist that I talked about, as well as some other resources that Karina has recommended for bereaved moms. Um, if you like this video and you found it helpful, please let me know by hitting the thumbs up um, and also commenting and sharing it with another community of bereaved moms or a mother, another mom you know that is bereaved is helpful as well. So namaste to you and remembering your baby always.